The government is proudly celebrating the fact that it's just received its 12,000th order from a primary school from a, for a microcomputer. That means that since the Department of Industry launched its multi-million pound Micros in School scheme with a great fanfare two years ago, there's now at least one in every secondary school and one in almost half the primaries. Britain, it is said, is ahead of anyone else in the world. Well, so much for the hardware. Hand in hand with that goes a Department of Education project to develop the programs, that's the software, that teachers need to put in their computers. Just how well is that vital part of the operation being done? Well, the government succeed in uh, tapping the, if the government is to succeed in tapping the fascination, even of the smallest ones for the new technology, I've been finding out. Are you sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. Once upon a time, it was listen with mother, education by radio at home. Though the familiar catchphrase may still be there, now it's far more likely to be compute with mother. Car? The new computer genius, it appears, is still in nappies. While parents struggle to convert old minds to new technology, infants are soaking it all up with astonishing ease. With a computer now in over a million homes, children like Lorna, 18 months old, have plenty of opportunity to explore their talents. Her sister Janet is only just five and a perfect example of the best the home computer can produce. The new computer WizKid makes a hard taskmaster. How many sides? Do you know how many sides hexagons have? Here, enthusiastic parents, with a will to help a child exploit the technology, have created in her a computer literacy twice her age. At five, she's already writing her own simple programs. With such potential around, the onus on the primary schools to use it is heavy indeed. I've got some new computer programs for you. Now, who would like a turn? At Moonsmoot School in Redditch, the under fives are given an early taste of what the computer can do. To this tender age group, a computer is like a new toy that takes its place alongside all the others. But to Lillian Simmons, it's the best thing that's happened in all her 30 years of teaching. They're very, very motivating. In fact, sometimes the computer can motivate a child that teachers have found it hard to in other ways. Sometimes children have ability but lack really the means to express it. They may not be, have the language that they need or the written skills. Now, they don't need those when they are working on the computer. They have simply to answer the task in hand without these rather high level skills of language. So we have found that some children can succeed on the computer and this can motivate them in all other areas. But what comes out of the computer is only as good as what goes in. And the basic problem schools have in taking up where the home enthusiast leaves off is that there just aren't enough programs, there isn't enough software to put inside all the costly hardware the government's putting into schools. It should have been provided by the government through its Microelectronics Education Programme, the MEP, set up to develop the software to go with the computers. Derek Esterson resigned from the MEP because, in his view, the government put the cart before the horse. Too much money on the hardware, not enough, too late, on the software. I don't think that the people who set up MEP understood the enormous task that would be involved in producing sufficient programmes for the technology to be used sensibly by teachers and children in the classroom.
Well, when we started, there was very little indeed, and we found it very unsatisfactory because we never found programmes that just fitted into the gap in our curriculum. We found that perhaps programmes we found that were suitable needed adjustment for particular individual children. Uh, and so really we were frustrated at the beginning by the lack of software and that's why my staff and I started to train ourselves uh, to amend programmes, adapt them and, and eventually to write them. <laughs> So are the commercial giants filling the gap. For today's advertisers, children are their most potent symbol. But are they selling them anything worthwhile? What's worrying schools like Moon's Moat is that as more and more manufacturers come into the educational software market, so the quality of what they produce has to be watched. While the programmes may seem appealing and look very nicely packaged, they may not necessarily be educationally sound. Like this one. For example, from Sinclair. It's part of their Fun to Learn series, but could hardly be described as that. 55 seconds of multiple choice questions. Simple drill and practice the educators don't much like. It's the government's job to cajole the private firms into taking over where it leaves off. The major criticism is that so far many have come to real education too late with too little software of the wrong sort. I think that is a fair criticism and certainly the first thing that we look at in educational software now is to ensure that we're doing something with the computer that cannot be done easily without the computer. We published some software that was offered to us that had already been written and, um, and yes, I'm, we published it as it was. So, in other words, you recognise now that it wasn't very good? No, I think we learned a great deal from it. It seems that the uh, commercial boy's idea of what goes on in school is about 20 years out of date. Well, I think that MEP has done a reasonably good job in generating software. But this is software that's specifically geared for the education market, which is small. Of course, the commercial companies tend to be involved in generating software for the homes, which is a much bigger and much more lucrative market. Our understanding of what good and bad software is has been improving over the two years that the program has been running. And now there are things that the program produced in its early days that we'd be ashamed of ourselves uh, and really wouldn't want to see out in the streets. Whereas we could now offer advice and can produce programs that teachers will welcome and will want to use in their classrooms. Is there simply enough of uh, the software around for teachers and parents to choose from? No, there isn't enough and there'll probably never be enough. Birmingham University. Lillian Simmons takes time off from teaching to go back to the classroom herself to learn more about the computer. Even if some better quality software is slowly getting through to the schools, the bulk of the work in this country will still have to be done by the dedicated enthusiast like Lillian. Hello Lillian. How goes? Fine. Here at the university, she enlists the help of a senior educational psychologist. Together, they're developing the sort of package they believe to be suitable for three-year-olds upwards, for use both at school and at home. But I think it's important in all the programmes that when the child makes the wrong decision, he has immediate feedback on why he's wrong. This way, Lillian has the material she wants to take back to the children. Your answer is correct. What did he say? Your no. language is right. Do you like a turn now, Gillian? And then he summed it. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, terrific. Shall we have a look But at all this remains the exception rather than the rule. Which Most teachers have clearly been left one. without the vital stimulus to attract them to the computer in the first place. There hasn't been enough software to uh, enable us to really convince teachers that they should change the ways that they learn to teach, uh, to put an enormous effort into learning about the technology, uh, because without that software, teachers won't feel uh, that they can teach better, and all teachers are concerned to teach better. So what do you see then of the dangers of going along the present path? The danger is that people will become disillusioned, that a lot of money will have been spent on equipment. It'll be a nine days wonder, and it'll finish up as space invaders on a wet Friday afternoon, which would be a terrible thing to happen. 
Okay, Derek, would you like to type your program into Big Track and see what happens? Okay. Forward 5. Right 14. Left 1. Forward 2. A child can learn a lot from computer games and toys, and there'll always be a profit in those. The hard truth is, though, that there's never been much money in education, and the danger now is that if the commercial firms don't come up with the goods and the government fails to do its job, then the latent computer talents of a whole generation could simply go to waste.